everybody. Hello. That's Jeffrey Cranford over and there. And Jeff Hopper, I think. I don't see much of this guy over this last year and a half. I it's know, not it's a, been a it's little different. A... <laughs> I have a question before the question. Okay. Well, this is my son-in-law's uh, Epe, I think is what it's called. <laughs> it was my sword of the spirit. You know, one of the things we always try to do in uh, these groups and these videos is get to the word. What does God have to say about it? And it's kind of the sword of the spirit, you know? It's able okay. to divide asunder. So I was afraid people and were seeing this thing back here and having no idea well, what that they may not. They crazy may not. thing is back there. <laughs> we're talking about gains and losses in a time of trouble. And uh, we've come to this one about friendship. And I'm afraid that over the last year, because of some of the things that we've seen happen around the pandemic and the election and various fights that have been going on within our nation for one, but Masks, in other parts no of masks, the world as well. No vaccines, no vaccines. That people have lost friendships yeah. at times, or or even if they haven't flat lost them, there was that isolation where they weren't able to be with their friends and some of those things. So let's talk a little bit about friendship and the effect that trouble can have on yeah, friendships. Um, in golf, well, we're almost to the Ryder Cup mm -hmm. here. And... Um, and the, the captains of Ryder Cup teams or Salon Cup teams, they have to figure out how to put people together. Sometimes they do that because guys are friends or because games are complimentary or things like that. Right. How would you do it? I would have no idea. You know, the one, <laughs> the one guy that pops into my mind was uh, Paul Azinger, who put them together in pods and see how they, you know, because one of the indictments on American golf for a long time I had the privilege to play five or six times on the European tour, and they did. They travel in packs. The most of them have a had or used to have mm. a flat in London and travel together a lot. It was a whole different vibe than when I had the infrequent opportunity to play on the regular tour over here. People were separated, so they said we've got to figure out how we can solidify these friendships that will hold up under the pressure, the heat, if you will of a Ryder Cup scenario, how the team can, you know, somehow eat together, be together and be a team rather than being just a bunch of maverick individuals. Yeah. So now, Jeff, when that happens in golf and and not just at the Ryder Cup level, but sometimes if you're playing a, you know, a best ball and an invitation or something right. like that, there's this agreement among partners <laughs> between partners that, you know, you don't have to say you're sorry. Right. We just know you're going to make mistakes. I'm going to make mistakes. You don't have to say you're sorry. It's almost like we don't acknowledge the other person's bad shots, which there's probably a mental game aspect to that sure, too. Sure, sure. But in life, there are times when if we're really friends, I've got to say, man, you didn't handle that well. Right, sure. And I know you've said that to me and we we, we trust each other in that way. And yeah, I'm because sure we know we love each other, that. right. But what is it then that sometimes gets in the way. Trouble comes and I give you my take and you're just like, you'll have nothing to do with it and you're gonna walk away. I hope that never happens to us, but over the last year and a half, we've seen it happen to people in our churches. A and Absolutely. Whatnot. Well, it's it's one word and it's stinking, with two words, with an adjective, one word with an adjective, <laughs> stinking pride. Uh, I mean, one of the things I know uh, Jeff and I have kind of struggling through some things in this last year and a half. We haven't always seen eye to eye, as, as it will be the case with ministry, your business, your family, your spouse. And I remember us having the conversation. I'm like, if we don't have the goods, knowing what we know with this sword, if we don't have the equipment to deal with these interpersonal things, then who would have that? Right. And it goes back to this understanding of grace. Look, when, tr when trouble hits, you know, Jesus uses this little analog of building your house on a rock and saying, when the storms come, are you based on a sound theological understanding of trouble and now friendship and grace so that when it comes, you have the ability to navigate these very dark waters that can easily happen in any relationship, or are you just going to resort to how you feel in the moment? Well, I'm offended, or I'm hurt, or I'm 
you know, and so it requires this level of maturation, which will require to whom much is given, you know, even more is, is a, a lot is required, but it builds. And so what I'm able to deal with today in terms of absorbing a blow or what I perceive, maybe just perceive as a blow, but I've got to put my pride down. I just have to. And that really is so we can understand I can grow. Faithful are wounds, you know, Proverbs 27, 6. Faithful are the wounds of a friend. Yeah. But deceptive are the kisses of an enemy. What I hear you saying, if it's stinking pride, that when trouble comes and we're, our reaction is, let's find out who's responsible, or I should fall on us first. Hmm. Because that way we're much more careful when we then turn our eyes outward and say, is there a way to resolve this? Are there people I need to talk to? And I come at it not with my opinion first, my thoughts first, my, you know, whatever first. I come at it with, I, this is how I'm seeing things and I'm afraid it's gonna break us down. Please tell me how you're seeing things. <laughs> this would resolve 99% of world issues, <laughs> governments, Ethnicities, I mean, all the strife we see, there's no safe place to have dialogue because the world just doesn't have the equipment, the theological fundamentals, to use a golf analogy. They don't yeah. have that. So when trouble comes, everything breaks down. It's yeah. not that complicated. It's, there's a beautiful simplicity to it, but it's, a, it's Jesus. I mean, it's just his, his view of life. Forgive yeah. them for they know not what they do as he was hanging on the cross. And that's the grace, that's the spirit of grace that we've been given. Yeah. yeah. Unless we let stinking pride intervene. Do you get where we're coming from this week? <laughs> There's something that we just can't bear with and it's that pride and we can't bear with it and the weight of it on our own shoulders and certainly we have to watch out for it wherever we go. Thanks for being with us. I know we went a little longer this time, but um, I think it was worth it. And we'll see you in a week.